Okay, next, I want to take this uh, input shaft out of the double bearing box okay, that houses a pinion gear. That's the gear that goes into the case. And this is received by the drive coupler that's bolted to the flywheel of the engine. You notice you have two universal joints. One is so you can trim the drive up. The other one is so you can turn the drive. So you have that ability to turn and trim the drive while the uh, engine's running. There's a fixture tool that's an older fixture tool. This is not in the book. There's one very similar to this uh, for the new DPSA. They went back and, and realized this was made back, I think, in uh, DPA or earlier drives, maybe 280, 270. I can't remember where this tool comes from. Part number, if you want to write it in your service manual, is 3849658. If the dealership has one of those, clamp it into a vise, and then what you'll see is you'll see it doesn't fit perfect, but there's slots on both sides, and there's a recess that comes out of this that originally this would fit down and you could bolt it in position. Um, if you wanted to, uh, you could you know, modify it if you wanted to. I don't see any reason why I would want to modify it, but you could. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can almost thread two bolts into this as guide pins to hold it in position. That would work as well. You could just simply thread the bolts in maybe there, you know, two, in two inches tall, two and a half, three inches tall, cut the heads off, grind them in a, at, a, at a bevel, and then you could slide it over. But this seems to work fine. So what I need to do is I need to remove this bolt. Some of them are 7 16 12 points in some drives, older drives. Some of the newer drives use a Torx T50. So you need a T50 Torx socket. And it's tight because these have been uh, tightened to the point where they're gonna crush the crush lead to set the rolling torque. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply pull this up and lock it against the vise and hold it there. Put my breaker bar on here. Center it, undo that bolt. Now here's the other thing is that once that bolt comes out, this shaft can fall out. So don't let it fall on your foot. Some of them may be stuck. They may have a little bit of a, a burr in there. Probably not. I've, I haven't had any, but in the lab I have some that stick. So once that bolt's all the way out, you'll notice there's also a tapered special washer that holds it in position. And then I can just pull that shaft out. Now we have the input gear assembly out. There is a large snap ring in here I need to take out. So you need inside snap ring pliers to compress snap ring so you can get it out. Make sure you wear safety glasses. Okay. Definitely this is something you want to do and be careful doing. So make sure the video you can see it because I don't think you can see it very well. So I'm going to bring you down just a little bit. squeeze that snap ring, holding my hand down over it in case it takes out, and then I can hold on to it so it can't spring across the room. Most of these have a lock, so you have to squeeze them and release them. Sometimes that's two hands. Once you get that out, and it's a big snap ring. It's got a lot of tension on it. That snap ring's out. Next step that I need to do, I need to press the gear out of the housing. So when we go into the book, and I started out on page 100, and it will tell me I need some special tools. Number one is this tool, which is 884-938. It has a large diameter end and an open end, and it's just the large diameter goes up. You're gonna put this on a press. Put this on a press, make sure that you got room, okay? Uh, support it underneath, and then what you're gonna do is put a rag in here. The reason you're going to put a rag on top of this for the press 
This is that bearing, when you press the gear out, it doesn't smash into the actual bearing press fixture. So whatever you have, one inch plate steel, the mandrels that fit on the top, you're just gonna set this on the press, put this recess side up. Put it backwards, as always, my dyslexia. And now what we're gonna do is press the gear out. So I'll show you that. You need the 884-266 tool out of the book. It just looks like a piece of pipe, but it's a special tool. One end is tapered, that's the press, press side. The other end is open, that's the side that goes on the gear. So as you can see, I hope, that this will fit inside onto the gear. So the dark section is the gear. You gotta have the right, right tool for this. Put that on a press, line this up. We're gonna press that out, which is gonna press the gear out. Once that's done, we're gonna take this out, pull the gear out, take this fixture. Now what we have is we have what's left is going to be the bearing inside is left and the seal. So what I'm gonna do is flip this over. I don't need this tool anymore. Put this on the press. I have room for the seal to come out, All right? It comes this way and the bearing, and I'm going to take this tool, which is the 263-884-263 tool, and I'm going to press the bearing and the gear out. So this gear is out of position. You're going to press that out first, then you're going to press this out. I'll go through the reassembly procedure and setup procedure next. Uh, we'll put a new seal in it uh, when we're all done, and we're going to set the uh, preload, bearing preload, or as I call it, the rolling torque of the two bearings on here. That would be next.